I'm Kevin, all the way from us forum BX257, here bringing you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. And today I'm going to be taking a look at the G.I. Joe's low crawl vehicle, the 1986 LCV Recon Sled. Now the Recon Sled makes its first comic book appearance in the old model comic run of G.I. Joe in issue number 68. And makes its first cartoon appearance in the 1986 five part miniseries Arise or Pentor Arise in part 2. After its initial retail release, the LCV actually had a long run as a mail-away from 1988 through to 1992. There's no denying that the Recon Sled is a very strangely designed vehicle. Most collectors will classify it as a motorcycle, and so will I. It has the following features, like a big cycle-like rear wheel, which actually does have a rubber tire, which is rather nice. On the other side, it has what looks like a Gatling gun, which swivels around, but it doesn't swivel completely around. As a matter of fact, it seems to be uh, most comfortable facing backwards. It, it just doesn't rotate any further than this, at least it doesn't on my example. So, I mean, it doesn't look too bad facing this way, but it seems like it has a greater range of movement facing backwards, as if it's meant for a defensive... Uh, firing. Now on the front we have these front rollers instead of another you know rather conventional wheel. They almost look like little tracks but they're not. They're just kind of rollers. But they don't actually roll. They have a dummy wheel underneath here. A single one at that which is rather unfortunate and we'll see why in the moment. It actually turns specifically in a 40 degree arc. And I only know that because it says so on the back of the box for some strange reason. It also has these front, well actually I don't know what these are. On the back of the box they're calling these things machine guns and there's one on either side of the front cowling. And it really does look like weapons because it has these little things going down here which look like ammo clips. However on the blueprints they're calling these things front sensors. Um, well, I don't know. As for the top here, it has a little periscope on the top, which you can move around. And one of the reasons why this thing is supposed to have a periscope is because the figure is actually supposed to lie down prone on the chassis here. And it's supposed to look at this portion of the monitor basically facing downwards while driving this thing. Now here's a better look at the control surfaces of the vehicle. There's a lot of really nice stickers, but it does add a great deal of techno detail there. And this is the main monitor here that they're supposed to be looking down at while driving the thing forward. As for a figure, you can use basically any vintage figure in here, but I'm specifically going to use mainframe here mostly because he's one of the few 1986 figures that could actually kind of look upwards a little bit like his, his neck actually does go up quite a bit more so he looks a bit better in the prone position when he's you know see, seated in this thing but like i said you can basically put any figure in there it's not really going to matter so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to actually put the feet in these little holes the knees are supposed to rest here and his belly is supposed to rest along here. Now this is pretty much impossible for any vintage figure. Like like literally, you can't put one leg in here and then another leg in the other side. There just isn't enough room because they've decided to put a whole engine block on one side blocking this side and on a whole bulky part of the machine gun on this side. So you can either put one foot in and then pretend to put the other foot in on one side or the other. Here I'll just put one in here. Now these cutouts right where the cowling starts that's where you're actually supposed to put the hands. That's supposed to be the, uh, the sort of control grips but there's nothing actually in there. These things on the bottom are not handlebars. Again, we'll get to that in a bit. So, 
you stick the figure's head in like that, put the hands in like this, and that's how the figure is supposed to be seated, or rather lying down, recumbent, I'm not quite sure how you call that. But this is the whole reason why this thing is called a low crawl vehicle, because it is so low, and he is supposed to be just sort of peeking out, like the highest point is the periscope. Well, that's the whole point of this thing. It's supposed to be a stealthy, creeping vehicle that you can creep up on uh, an enemy bunker or whatever and just pop up over the bushes with this thing. It's not supposed to be a, a big, loud vehicle just rushing into battle. However, there are a few really odd things about the seating position, again, and one of them is that on the back of the box, it does say that this thing has a hinged chassis. And like I said, this whole sort of cowling just kind of wibbles up, up and down. And right there, this little bar here locks into place. Like if you push it forward, it locks into place in this odd arched form. But I have no idea what this arched form is for. With this thing arched this way, the front roller kind of hits the ground before the actual wheel does, so it's it sort of drags a little bit. It no longer rolls the way it does when this thing is flat, which is one of the reasons why I kind of wish they had either made these rollers actually able to roll, or they should have put an extra bunch of these little fake rollers underneath here. Now with him like this, he is now, well, I'll just use the second one as an example here, pop him in, and I don't know, he gets an extra couple millimeters up high, I guess. Now on the instructions, it says that there are two seating positions, but they only ever show you the prone position, which to be honest, looks like it's more or less designed for. And quite frankly, it is. However, if you've ever seen the commercial for this, I believe it was the commercial that was um, primarily for the Cobra Stun back in 1986. But they actually do show the LCVs being used in that commercial. It shows the figures actually sitting seated regularly like this. And that's what these things are for. These things are actually footrests, not handlebars for the prone position. So you're supposed to fit the fi uh, figure's feet like this and he's just supposed to be sitting there with his hands doing nothing yeah that, that's that's official so I don't know if the arched locked in ver locked in chassis hinge is for that or if you're actually supposed to have it flat like this for the seated position and here is the recon sled as compared to the other previous G.I. Joe motorcycles, 1982 through 1984 Ram and the 1985 Silver Mirage motorcycle. And as you can see, even with the figures as far forward as they are holding the handlebars or controls, they are still quite a bit taller than the recon sled. So they have actually done a very good job in actually making this thing as low profile as they possibly could. Cobra never got a motorcycle, but in 1985 they did get the Ferret ATV, which is the closest comparison, or rather rival, that I can think of, at least in vehicular form, to the Recon Sled. If you do like the aesthetics of the Recon Sled, with this big window and kind of angular proportions, and of course the lie-down front seat, of course, you're probably going to like the Havoc as well, as they share exactly those same properties. As a matter of fact, I would actually say that if you do have a Havoc, I think the Recon Sled actually makes a good escort vehicle for it. And now it's time for... Does a modern figure fit it in? As usual, I'll be using my 2009 Rise of Cobra Footloose figure as my example of a modern G.I. Joe figure. But I'll just be pointing the uh, toes downwards, and on some figures you yeah, can't actually do that because they don't really have the same ankle articulation. But if they do, that's what I'm going to be doing here, just to make things a little bit easier. 
and you can just pop this guy right in those uh, rear foot holes there. Oops. And well, what do you know? He actually fits in better than a vintage figure because of all that extra articulation. You can actually get both feet in the footholes. If you're looking for an LCV recon set on the aftermarket, they're extremely common. And because they were also released during a long period of time because of the mailaways, they don't really go for a lot of money when they're not complete. And there is only one thing to look out for when it's not complete, and that is the periscope. Now the periscope is just popped onto the uh, windshield by this tiny little ball peg here. And while mine sits in there fairly firmly, I can kind of understand that some might not be as firm as that, and they might actually fall out of that little hole quite easily, leading to these things being lost. And they usually are not attached on there. So that's one thing that's always missing. And it's actually the antenna itself which goes for quite a lot of money for some strange reason. So while you might be able to get this for $5, now it's 15 Is that strange or what? Cobra never got a proper motorcycle, but in 1985 they did. They did. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.